Hello, good morning. Welcome to this session. I am Ms. Manali and our topic for the day would be Barrow Jumbles. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being with me today. Uh, you can see a chat box there. So if you have any queries, if you have any questions, you are free to put it down uh, on the chat box. Also, uh, you are free to put it down in the chat box. And uh, also during the session, we would be working together. We would have a sort of an interaction. So I would love if you can participate, if you can join us and that will make the session much more uh, successful. Okay, so today our topic, we are working on para jumbles today. This is one of the content areas in uh, RBI grade B that leaves many of us baffled. It can, sometimes they are tricky, they consume a lot of time. So our focus today would be to make things simpler, to try to find out certain strategies which will help us to solve para jumbles better in a smarter manner and in a manner that is time efficient, right? Para jumbles, as we all know, these are jumbled sentences. Yes, so we have a paragraph that has been jumbled. But this is also a very important test of a reading skill. Now, what skill are we talking about? The skill that we are talking about here is the skill of reading and comprehending and establishing a link until and unless we establish a link. It's very difficult to put those pieces of jigsaw puzzle. And when I say jigsaw puzzle, I mean the sentences because parajumble is very much like solving a jigsaw puzzle. The pieces are all scattered. So you need to find out the bigger picture and put the pieces together, right? So what skill am I talking about? I'm talking about the skill of establishing a link, finding out the bigger picture. What is it talking about? So unless we find out the bigger picture, we try to establish a link, find a connection. It's very, very difficult to solve parajumble examples, right? So let's try to make things simpler. And for example, here I have a set for you. So all those are who are live with us today, uh, good morning, good morning, thank you, good morning, thanks for joining. Uh, if you take a look at this list, this set of sentences, what do you think is the bigger picture? What is it talking about? Anyone who would like to uh, pitch in and answer? What is it talking about, this set of sentences? What is it talking about? So we have Roger Federer is the greatest tennis player of all time. That's the first sentence followed by his favorite surface is the grass. He's ambidextrous, can play forehands with his right hand as well as the left hand, but he can play the backhand only with his right hand. And his favorite tournament is the Wimbledon. So what is the bigger picture? What is this set talking about? Anyone would like to pitch in an answer? Okay, let me give you let me give you the answer. So if you read carefully, this set is talking about Roger Federer, his talents, 
Yes, the way he's ambidextrous. And next, he's talking about his preferences. The way he prefers grass as his favorite surface. His favorite tournament is the Wimbledon, right? The moment we know that this set is talking about Roger Federer and his talent and preferences, you can come to a conclusion that the first sentence Roger Federer is the greatest tennis player of all time would be the beginning, the first sentence of the paragraph itself. Because if you look at the other sentences, they are referring back to him through the use of a pronoun. So his favorite surface is the grass. That cannot be the first sentence because we have the use of the pronoun his. Next, he's ambidextrous, same thing. He can play four hands with his right hand, same thing. But there's a contradiction again. And you cannot have a sentence that starts with and. Therefore, once you come to the conclusion that Roger Federer and his talents and preferences, this is the bigger picture, this is the main point, the main idea of the paragraph, you can easily come to a conclusion that A is the first sentence of the paragraph. And then things will fall into place. Next, we are talking about his talents. So, obviously, his talent is ambidextrous. He can play forehand with his right hand as well as his left hand. Next, he can play backhand only with his right hand. There's a, a sort of a trivia about him. It's, it's a fact. It's an interesting fact about him. Next, we move on to his preferences. He loves to play on the grass. The grass is his favorite surface. And his favorite tournament is the Wimbledon. And is basically joining sentence B and F, right? See, A, C, D, E, B, F. That's the right answer, okay? So the first thing that we need to remember when we are working with para-jumble is to establish a link, find out the bigger picture. You should never read the sentence again and again without identifying the connections. If you read sentences without identifying the connections, you're basically wasting your time. From the beginning, your effort should be to only connect. You need to find out the connection, right? Usually test setters pick up sentences from newspaper articles, from books, from magazines. And obviously these are paragraphs. So they definitely have a logical sequence. They have a logical connection. So your target from the beginning would be to find out the connection. That's the first strategy. We need to find out what the passage is talking about. Let's look at the other strategies. So identify the purpose. What is the passage talking about? Is it talking about a concern? Maybe it's talking about globalization. Maybe it's talking about global warming. Maybe it's talking about pollution. Is it expressing a concern? Is it talking about a theme? Maybe the topic of how the pandemic affected the markets or how, uh, how well are we handling the vaccination scenario? So is it talking about a scenario? Is it talking about a concern? It's talking about an issue. And we can have a number of issues we can have an anxiety driven issue. We can have passages that talk about solutions to a problem or it's explaining a concept. So the first thing is to find out what it's talking about. So you, in the beginning, don't try to arrange the sentences. First try to find out, ask yourself, what is it talking about? Once you get that, then the next step would be to see if there are any pronouns that are interlinked, yes? Generally, the noun would be mentioned first and there would be a pronoun which will point at it. So obviously those sets would be the pairs. Remember what happened for Roger Federer? Let me go back and let me show you. Look at Roger Federer. See, the first sentence tells us about Roger Federer and the next sentences will use the pronoun his. So obviously, B, C, D cannot be your first sentence. So by the process of elimination, the moment you identify the noun and the pronoun, 
that will help you to eliminate all the unnecessary, the irrelevant, the incorrect sentences. Right? Look at the next one. Next, we are talking about a chronology, a time reference. So when we are talking about a time reference, it's usually a series of events, a series of steps. So things are happening one after the other. So our target would be to identify the beginning of the event and try to put the pieces one after the other. If you played Jenga, I don't know if you played Jenga, it's the same thing. You need to sequence, uh, arrange things sequentially, right? Once you do that, the pieces won't fall off. Yes? What's our next strategy? Next strategy would be, this is a very, very important strategy. We need to look for keywords. These keywords can be classified as keywords that you, we can usually find in the beginning of sentences. Keywords that usually lead to a conclusion. We have keywords that compare, right? So if they are comparing, obviously they form a pair, okay? Also, if they are contrasting, they are forming a pair. Same with connecting, yes? So we have keywords like nowadays, a, an, and beginning. They are introducing the sentences. Thus, therefore, finally, eventually, clearly, these are paragraphs that seems to clinch an argument that seems to summarize so they conclude yes next we are moving on to keywords that set up a comparison yes they compare so words like likewise words like similarly they compare and contrasting three words would be to but yet although on the other hand nevertheless these keywords they set up a contrast, yes? Words like additionally, in addition to this, apart from these, all these words, they connect sentences, right? Okay? Now let's work on this passage together, yes? So I would love it if you can join in, if you can pitch in, and we can solve this passage together. We're gonna go very slow, sentence by sentence, so that you get those concepts pretty clear, okay? Let's first read the sentence. Thanks for joining, Tejashvi. Hello, Manisha. Hello, Sushil. Yes, let's read the set of sentences, okay? According to it, organized retail stores are not wolves at the doors of friendly neighborhood grocery stores as there is room for expansion of both. Many have been crying foul over the entry of organized retail stores, expressing concern over their impact on small store owners. The final winner in the competition, however, is the common man who gets to choose between the most suitable options and in turn fights with the essential commodities. In spite of this potential for expansion, it is doubtless that small store owners face a decline in profit in initial years if organized retailers set up stores in the vicinity. But a study conducted over a period of two years goes a long way towards allaying these fears. This impact, however, wears off once they learn to take on the competition, which in turn enhances efficiency all around. Now, my question for you is, can you tell me what is the theme of the passage? What is it talking about? Just let's first take that up. So imagine we are sitting in an exam, we are doing this, we've got this in front of us and we are trying to solve this passage. The first thing you ask yourself, what is it talking about? Can you tell me what is it talking about? Anyone who would like to pitch in and answer, what, what is this passage talking about? Anyone who would like to pitch in and answer, what, what is this passage talking about? 
Okay, Manisha, thanks for the answer. But can you please tell me the, what is it talking about? What's the main idea of the parallel? Okay, let's go, go through this together, right? Yes, about small store owners. Very good. And what's happening to them? If you read the sentences carefully, you will see. Yes, very good. Thank you, Tejashvi. Thank you, Manisha. You're right on point. So here we have a scenario in front of us in which we have these huge retail stores that are taking over the small store owners, right? So people are worried about that. The how will these organized retail stores affect the small store owners and their business, okay? So can you tell me which sentence echoes this title, this theme, which sentence? So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, there is one sentence which is basically summarizing the theme of the passage. Yes, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Tejashvi. Yes. So we have B, if you read B carefully, this is basically the thesis statement. It's telling you in one sentence, it's summarizing the main theme of the paragraph. It's telling you many have been crying foul over the entry of organized retail stores expressing concern over their impact on small store owners. Yes, if you look at the solution, the solution will tell you the same thing. It's saying this is the opening sentence as it lays the premise for subsequent formation of paragraph. Now look at the next sentence. Tejashvi, you, okay, okay. What about F? Some of you might feel that why not F? Okay. Okay, yes, F also talks about the impact. So you might feel that this impact is linked with the impact that we have in sentence B. So this impact, however, wears off once they learn to take on the competition, which in turn enhances efficiency all around. Okay, let's take that. Let's move on with that. Yes, George, you feel the next sentence is E, okay? Let's see, the next sentence talks about a study that is saying something else. Yes, so there is a study, but a study conducted over a period of two years goes a long way towards allaying, reducing these fears. Yes, now, but now you're confused. You don't know what to do. The second sentence can be F because impact is, can be connected with the impact in sentence B or it can be E where it is talking about a study conducted over a period of two years, which is reducing these fears, telling you something else, okay? Once you are confused, don't get stuck. Let's move on. The whole purpose of the test is to confuse you. Let's just move on, yes? Okay, so my first sentence is B. That's that we know, we are confirmed. The second sentence can be either E or F. Very well, E or F, keep that in mind. Let's just move on. What do you think is the third sentence? Mm -hmm. Yes, I told you, yes. They just be absolutely, I agree. Yes, I know. So the second sentence can be E or it can be F. Now we are confused. How to clarify, how to clear up this confusion? Let's stop with the second sentence now and move on. let's move on to the next sentence, third sentence. What would you think is the third sentence? Yes, 
Okay. The third sentence. Thank you, Chidambaram. Thank you for that. Thank you for your answer. The second sentence. Uh, I'm sorry. The third sentence. You feel is a. And why not? A is perfectly correct because a is talking about the study that was conducted over a period of two years and the study is saying something else what is the study saying the study is saying that these retail store owners are not wolves they are not wolves let's not take things negatively they are not bad they will help the small store owners to expand very good a can be the third sentence but our confusion have not yet been cleared. We are still confused about E or F as the second sentence, but we have got the third sentence. We have got the third sentence, right? Let's again, let's not stop. Let's move on. What do you think is the fourth sentence? What do you think is the fourth sentence? Mm -hmm. What do you think is the fourth sentence? There is a keyword there. You can see the word expansion. Which sentence do you think is the fourth sentence? Yes, very good, Tejashvi. Very good. Yes. Look at sentence number D. Sentence number D is telling you more about the study. Yes, it's giving you a new fact. Yes, it's telling you that in spite of these potential for expansion, it is doubtless that the small store owners face a decline in profit. Yes, there is a scope for expansion. Definitely, we cannot undermine that. But in spite of everything, we need to accept the fact that there might be a decline in profit. Very good. Yes, so there is, we are still scared. There is a fear factor that is involved. Yes, now you tell me, what do you think is the next sentence? Now tell me the next sentence. Who can tell me what's the next sentence? Yes, everything is not negative. Yes, we are scared. Yes, there might be a decline in profit, but things also can look bright for them. How do we know that? Yes, Tejashvi. See, now I hope your confusion is clear, right? See, we were confused about E or F. Remember, in the beginning, we were still thinking about E or F. But now, see, things are falling into place. And this is the reason I picked up this example, because this passage is confusing. This passage can be tricky. If you don't look at the bigger picture, you might, your second sentence might be completely incorrect. Now look at sentence F. Sentence F is actually linked with sentence D. It is not linked with sentence B. This is the reason I say when you are stuck, let's move on. When the others fall into space, if when you're solving a jigsaw puzzle and you solve all the pieces and you just have one piece left, consider the process of elimination, you know the piece, you have that piece, you can just put it and fit it back and you are done. Yes, but if you are stuck and you wait on, you are reading and pondering and thinking, you are wasting your time, you have to move on, right? Now look at F, sentence F, which was the confusing factor here. Sentence F basically, refers to the sentence D. It's telling you, yes, there is potential for expansion, but we are also worried that these small store owners might face a decline in profit. However, if everyone becomes competitive, if we try to accept competition with the right spirit, 
things will improve. Things will become much more efficient. Yes? Now, we are more or less done. Now, tell me, by the process of elimination, which sentence clinches the argument? Where is the con conclusion there now? Tell me the last sentence. Yes, Tijesh, that's the reason I took up this topic and I took up this passage because this is a very, very confusing passage. And we know the last sentence will obviously be sentence C, right? The final winner in the competition, however, is the common man who gets to choose between the most suitable option and in turn fights with essential commodities. Yes? So what we did was that, what did we learn from this passage? The, what we learned from this passage was to find out the bigger picture. You have to identify the theme of the passage, that's the first thing. And then we can backtrack and see which sentence is telling you about the theme. That's gonna be the first sentence. We move on. Yes, if we get stuck, we will keep that in our mind and we will move on and try to make sure we put the other pieces together. Once the other picture, the, the most of the picture is done, but when we have successfully put in all this, the small scattered pieces together, just have maybe two pieces left. It's very easy to work on those two sentences using the process of elimination, rather than getting stuck, wasting time, and then rushing through it. Yes, let's see what does the solution telling us. The solution is telling us, that, yes, the first sentence we already did. Let's move on to the next sentence. The next sentence, this sentence will be the second one as it contradicts the premise laid down in the first sentence, but is a contrasting keyword. It's telling you something else. It's laying down a contrast. A, A is basically expanding, telling you more about the study. It refers to the study mentioned in the previous sentence. D, again, D is again setting up a contrast. It's contradicting the idea. F, this is telling you more about the premise. F is telling you, yes, there can be a decline in profit. Yes, we are worried, but things might look better if all of us accept competition in the right spirit. And the C, the last sentence, it is drawing a conclusion to the ongoing discussion. Yes, so what do we take home from today's session? We take home from today's session is that when we are working with para jumbles, things might be confusing, things might get tricky. So the idea is to Tackle para jumble when you are comfortable. If you're not comfortable with para jumble, don't start off with para jumble. So you can keep para jumble and comprehension for the later half. First half, work with the ones you are comfortable with. Now, you cannot ignore para jumbles. You have to handle them. So when you handle them, number one, keep calm and work on. That's the mantra. Don't get baffled. Don't get worked up. You have to keep your calm because you need to find out what is it telling you about? What is it all about? What is the premise? What's the passage telling you? Once you get the bigger picture, you have all those small pieces of jigsaw with you. It's time to put them all together. Try to find out which sentence connects, forms a connection, establishes a link with the first sentence. And so we move on. The techniques we use would be, we look at the pronouns. We try to look for keywords. We try to look for words. Remember impact. Impact was a confusing word because impact was connecting you up with the wrong sentence. But when we looked at the bigger picture, when we looked at all the other sentences, we realized that sentence was basically misleading. Yes. So don't trust keywords. You have to look at the bigger picture and move on with that. Right. I really hope that this session, this very, very brief session on uh, parajumbles really helped you, especially how to tackle them, how to keep calm, what strategies to use. Practice on, 
Yes, work on them. Try to do the ones that are challenging. Try to time your practice. That's exactly very, very important. How long are you taking to solve a specific set? That's very important to find out that how well you are doing. So time yourself, practice, work on it, keep calm and keep tuned. Stay with us. Thanks for joining. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot more coming up, especially as RBI exams draw near. Stay tuned. Stay with us. Thanks for joining. Thanks for participating. You've been a wonderful audience. Thank you. Stay safe. See you next time. Bye.